this is prayer house, then you must understand that the way, the way to pray must be to understand that God is here. God is here. So if I will speak to God, I must understand that he, he, he's in here. He dwells in me. He dwells in me. That's the way he's everywhere. That's the way he's filling the earth. Because he has filled all man's heart. He's here. So when I'm coming to pray, I'm not coming to pray because there's something special on Master has planted here. No. Is that we are all bringing our God. We are all carrying God inside. And every time we come together like this, it is the fullness of God that merges here. Sometimes church is not sweet because you leave all the work for pastor. Only pastor knows God. So all of you bring all your problem to one pastor that knows God to solve all the problem and many times it can be frustrating. What will happen if all of you know you carry God? No, 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 no. Someone listen to me. What will happen if all of you know you carry God? Church will be sweet. There will be miracles even in pastor's absence. Pastors will, be, pastors will be in the office and there are miracles breaking out because I'm sitting by God right now. I'm sitting, I'm sitting by somebody that carries God right now. I'm sitting by someone that knows God. So if I have a problem, I will not wait until that special moment when pastor comes. While I enter the church, somebody that carries God is waiting for me. He's waiting to shake my hand at the door. And as he shakes my hand, that same power of God in his heart touches me. That's church. That's church. That's what true church is. Church is not the place where we all come for one person to show up. No. No. He lives in me. As a matter of fact, today as I'm going to church, there's a miracle that's going to happen in church because of me. That's how true believers think. There's a miracle that's going to happen in that church because of me. That's what makes you pray at home. That's what makes you spend time in prayers as though you are the pastor. Kai. That's what makes you pray three hours fast. Sometimes they ask my people, why do you have to pray that long? Are you pastors? They don't have to be pastors to pray long. It takes prayer to keep the believer living. It takes prayer to keep the believer living. This life is full of raging storms. Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So a wise believer understands that he is in a battlefront. It takes prayer to stay alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God said to Isaiah one day. This is one of the interesting stories I read in scripture. Isaiah one day was praying, I'm sure. And the Lord spoke to Isaiah and said, go and tell my king. Tell my servant the king he's going to die. Surely he will die. He's not going to come out of this. So Isaiah, man of God, goes to the king's house, to the palace of Hezekiah. And says to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, you will die. Dying, surely you will die. And you know, when the man of God has delivered that kind of message, he just turns his back and walks away. I leave you to your God. Prepare for your death. Because God has spoken. There are many of you that believe that once God speaks, he is final. Say so once God talks, he don't finish. Now ask God to talk and it go happen. I'm going to show you something this morning. Watch it. So now as Isaiah has spoken, what God said, God has told the man of God, tell him he will die. Isaiah leaves the court of the king. As he's leaving the court of the king, Hezekiah would have also remembered that I can talk to God too now. Should be me, I can talk to God. Bible says, Hezekiah got up and faced the wall and began to talk to God. We are never told in scripture what Hezekiah told God. But Isaiah was still in the king's palace when another new word came. He said, go and tell him. He has 15 extra years. What happened between when God said, tell him he's dead and when God is saying he has extra time? Somebody talked with God. I said that to tell you that you can change the course of your destiny. I said that to tell you, you can change the diagram of your life. I said that to tell you, you can change the design of your life. If something is happening right now in your life and you don't like it, you can talk to God about it. And if you tell God, he's able to
able to change it. He's able to change it. He's able to change it. So when bad things happen to people, it's not because God wanted it to happen. It's because people never talk to God about it. I am saying to you, by the voice of a prophet, no other bad news in your life ever again. I am not talking as a pastor. I am speaking to you as a voice of God. The next bad news in your life is deleted. Once you understand that I can arrange my life and arrange my destiny, you put yourself in charge. You know, many people believe that life is luck. Your master, they think you, you just had luck. So, your master, get luck. So if you hear the man's story before, eh? ah, the guy get luck. Life is not luck. Life is not even hard work. Life, life is grace. Life is grace. There are certain things that will never happen to you because you never believe it. What, when a man begins to believe in God's word, it means that everything he believes can come to pass. That's grace. That's grace. I'm saying to you that you can rearrange your life. I am number eight of nine children in my father's house. I lost my father when I was five years old. There was nothing meaningful that will come out of our life. But I woke up one morning telling myself, I am the son of the king. My father is not dead. My father is alive. The greatest lesson I have learned in this life is that when my earthly father died, I found my true father. What I am today is a result of understanding the fatherhood of God. When Jesus Christ showed up, teaching them how to pray, look at what he taught them when he told them how to pray. He said, when you pray, say, our father. You know why? Because the key to breakthrough is relationship. When you pray, say, our father. The word our used there means my father and your father. He did not say when you pray, say my father. No, my father would have been Jesus' father. But just say when you pray, say our father. It means my father and your father. Meaning that the same way God will attend to Jesus is the same way he will attend to you. The same way, now, 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 listen to me. The same way, the same way God will attend to Jesus is the same way we attend to you. Jesus is not more important to God than you. Do you know what it means when John 3 16 says to you that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life? Do you know what it means? It means that if you believe, you have eternal life. Do you know what eternal life means? Eternal life means the life of God. The life that makes God, God, is what eternal life is. Then God says to you, that if you believe, you will have. You know, many people believe that when they get to heaven, that's where they will have eternal life. Eternal life is not when you get to heaven. Eternal life is not the reward that you get when you get to heaven. Eternal life is the gift you get to stay alive on earth. So I have eternal life. I have eternal life. Meaning that what makes a fish a fish is the kind of life the fish has. That's why the fish is not taught how to swim. From birth, the fish knows how to swim. Do you understand that? The bird can fly not because of anything else but the kind of life that operates in the bird. So the bird is not taught how to fly. The bird just waits for wings to come. The bird will soon fly. Because the life of the bird is programmed to have feathers and fly. Are you hearing me? It's the same reason why you cannot train a lion with vegetable. Is impossible because the life of that lion is sustained by blood 
So they are called cannibals, right? It's the life that gives them their identity. Am I saying something here this morning? So if all of these animals operate by a certain life, when it comes to a human being, he has a more superior life than animals. Hope you understand that. By being a human being, you are higher than an animal. But the believer is not a human being. Remove it from your mind that the believer is a human being. It is the reason why many of us have not been able to do great things. Because we still see ourselves as what? Human beings. The word human means earthly. It's from the word humus. Ground. 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 So God spat on the ground and from the humus he made man. So man was made in the image and likeness of God. Man, humus was made but he was made in a certain image. It's called the image of God. Follow me. So it means that when God took the sand from the ground, God did not just make a man on his own. No, he made a man in a certain image. He was made how? In the image of God. See what, John, what Genesis says? Genesis says, God began to consult. God said, let us make man in our own image and our likeness. It is the reason why angels began to complain. In Psalms 8, angels began to complain. What is man? That thou art mindful of him. Why are you thinking of him in such a superior way? What is he? Who is he? He said you have only made him lower than Elohim. The word angels there means you made him lower than yourself. Meaning that you are putting him in charge of everything. We used to be in charge of everything. How come a man, a species, is coming out to be in charge of everything? Because that was God's arrangement. God's arrangement was that this man I am making in my image will be in charge of everything. That's why Psalm says in Psalms 105, I think verse 16, he says, the heavens, all oh, the heavens is the Lord. The earth has he given to the sons of men. Meaning that the earth is your property. The earth is your property. It was made for you. When Adam sinned, we all fell from that superior way that God made us. We all fell. But when Jesus showed up, Jesus knew that it was not about making man come back to take his previous seat. And this is where we have challenges. Because people think that when Jesus came and died for us, what happened was that he gave us the seat that Adam lost. That's not what Jesus did. That seat that Adam lost had been taken by the devil. That seed had been occupied. One day while in the temptation of Jesus Christ, the devil said to Jesus Christ, he said, if you bow to me, I will give you all this place for it is given to me. It means that Adam gave him. So God could not just drive the devil and give you the seed. No, the seed is occupied. He is called the prince of this world. So he's the ogre of this world. There was one seat remaining that was not occupied. It was the seat of God. The remaining seat was the seat of God. When Jesus died, the mission of Jesus was to give you that seat. Don't you understand what people say that we are seated with God or with Christ in heavenly places? It means we have left the earthly realm. Kabayada. We are, we are, we are in a new place now. It is the same place where God is. I'm seated with God in heavenly places. Far, far above. Principalities and powers. Principalities and powers operate with, beneath the heavens. That's why demons don't have a place in heaven. Don't let anybody deceive you. They don't have place in heaven. Don't let Job even deceive you. You know, Job said one day that God was having a meeting and he showed up inside the meeting. Don't let that story deceive you. Read Job very well. Job said, I spoke out of my ignorance. Meaning that all I've been saying eh, is jazz. I spoke out of the imaginations of my heart. That's Job's conclusion. 
Because when God has meetings, even angels are scarcely there. There are meetings where God will have that only sons can enter. It's for me and you. There are meetings that angels can enter. Sir, angels are called ministering spirit. They are messengers. That's why all true scriptures, when you see that somebody wants to worship an angel, he will beg. They say, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. You can't worship an angel. We, we can't worship angels. Do you know why? We are superior. When Daniel saw an angel, the angel begged and he said, don't, don't worship. Worship is for you people. It's not for us. It's for you. You know why? You are my boss. You are my ogre. You, 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 know, you know what, what it means to be you are my ogre? It means you are my master's son. You are my master's child. If you do this, I, I will lose my job. This thing you want to do so is what we do to your father. The father is your father. Somebody needs it to sink in his heart that the father of Jesus Christ is my father. The papa of Jesus, now my papa. Meaning that if Jesus knocks on papa's door, papa say yes, my coming. It's the same way when you knock on papa's door, papa will say yes, my son coming. Listen, it means that God does not have grandchildren. He does not have grandchildren. He's your father is my father. I don't care what your title is. If you are an apostle, thank God for the grace of apostleship. But I'm a son. I'm a son. I'm a son. Sir, sonship is superior to apostleship. Because it takes sons to be apostles. It takes license to be apostles. There are apostles everywhere. They are also. also. There are apostles everywhere. Anybody can wake up in the morning and call them apostle. The word apostle means what? The sent one. Messenger when they send message. That's what, that's what apostle means. It means the sent one. So if a master calls one of his boys now on radio and say, go to Kirigwe, but whoever he sent is an apostle. It means that the person has what it takes to get the job done. But guess what? When he calls his son, his son is first a son for him to go on that errand. When the apostle gets there, the apostle may need to show signs that Oga sent him. When his son gets there, the son does not have to do anything. Once the son shows up, a guy has shown up. Oh, I want to close this meeting this morning. I am saying every time you show up, a guy has showed up. Every time you show up, God has showed up. Every time you show up, it's like Jesus Christ just showed up. So the same way demons will respond to Jesus, is the same way they are responding to you now. The same way demons are crying when they say Jesus, is the same way they will cry when they see you. Because every time you show up, a guy has come. Who am I talking to this morning? Every time you show up, it's a guy that showed up. Every time, every time, many of us showed up. We didn't know a guy showed up with us. So we negotiate with devils. Bible says that my people are destroyed. Not because they don't have faith. Not because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Not because they don't have power. But because they don't know. They're ignorant. They're ignorant. They're ignorant. They don't know. So they still show up. And even beg God. Say God we have come again. We are just begging you. Show us mercy now God. God, where are you? Show us mercy. All those prayers are prayers from an ignorant fool. How many times have your children begged you for food? Fathers, it is not, it is not pride for your child to be begging you for food. It is failure on your part. Especially when you have as a father. For a man, 
that will not provide for his family, not cannot, will not. Meaning he has the ability to, but he does not. He has the money, but he does not. There are fathers that just like children begging them. See, they don't beg me, they don't know that I'm the boss in this house. You are failed. You are failed. The meaning of the word father is the word source. It's progenitor. It means that everything comes from you. You are created to supply. You've got your supply channel working. So when your children come, they don't come to beg, they come to receive. I'm speaking right now, this morning. When sons come, they come to receive. They don't come to beg. That's why we say to you that we are receivers. We are receivers. The height of prayers is to understand how to receive. Not how to pray, not how to ask. The problem is not asking, the problem is receiving. If everybody is waiting in the waiting room, August children will not wait to. I am saying to you, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. If you like, wait in the waiting room. I'll pass you. You see this door? Is that this door? I'll open it. Why? I'm a son. I was asking you, how many of you truly will your sons beg for food? How many of you will your sons, you know, sometimes it's shocking. They just call you from school. Say, daddy, they say we should pay school fees. Oh. I, I, you understand? Know, say, daddy, they say we should pay school fees. You, 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 even if government has not paid you for six months, you don't tell them, go tell your teacher, say they never pay me. No, no, no. It's, not, it's irrelevant. You will find money to pay. You know the interesting part of this story? The interesting part of the story is after you have paid the school fees, you know what the child will say? The child will not say that they has paid. The child will say, I have paid my school fees. Because what you did is what the child did. Whatever you have done is what the child has done. Let fatherhood sink in your head. God is my father. Say it with me. God is is my father say it again god is my father one last time god is my i'll tell you one last thing and i'll close when adam sinned the relationship between us and god was breached something happened with the relationship when jesus died that relationship was renewed Adam's sin is not my problem now. It's the death of Jesus Christ that's my advantage. Because Jesus has died, this sin problem has been dealt with. I'm going to say one last thing, I need to receive it. When God sees us now, he does not see us as sinners. Now listen. I have found out, sir, that the greatest hindrance to prayers is not not knowing how to pray. Is not knowing that all your sins have been forgiven. That God is not angry with you. And that God is not judging you. Shh, shh, shh. You see, we have been talking about God as our father. One of the greatest mistakes we make sometimes is to think that because God is father and you are father, that the way you treat your children is likely the way God treats his children. God is a better father than you. Meaning that he will not treat his children the way you treat yours. He will not. I'll tell you. He is a merciful God. If you hold the offense of your child against him, does not mean God holds your offense against you. The reason you can hold offense against your child is because you are a man. But he's God. And guess what? How many of you have held offenses against your children? They hear that police arrest them. They used to be drinking tea. Yeah. So it means that that thing you thought was offense held against them is not true. It's not true. Because if you hear that they are in trouble now, you will swear to run the task it means that truly, truly, the father nature is in you. 
But many times we try to cover it. But if you being evil can respond to your children like that, how do you think God responds? How do you think God responds? I, I come from Benin. My wife is a Benin one. I, I'm, an, I'm from Edo State. And in Edo State, you find father saying, I disown you. I disown you. So I tell them now, I said, if your father say I disown you, please check your DNA after that. Did it change? It means that I disown you is only lip talk. Blood doesn't change. If God say I disown you, he can't. Because blood doesn't change. The blood of Jesus Christ is what bought you. And as long as it is the blood of Jesus that bought you, God can't deny you. I'm saying to somebody in this house, God cannot deny you. The same way he cannot deny Jesus, he cannot deny you. It is the reason why the Bible now says, let us come boldly into the throne of grace. How do you come? Bold. Not timid. I'm Bold. no longer a slave. Quiet. Just low. On the background. Bold. Bold. Sing. Bold. You know why? Of God. I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm a child no of God. Just let only her sing for me. Only her. Only her. To fear. Only her. Sir, many times the challenge. Is this thing she's talking about is fear of God. you think you have done too much bad things no and god is tired so god wants to push you over to the devil to god can't do that he has bought you with an everlasting price the price that is put in your life is too expensive to abandon you no the cost over your life is too much to throw away many people don't know this too much too much too much if there's any problem in your life it is not your problem it is your father's problem to fix when you buy a big car after spending 19 20 million in buying the car they now tell you the fuel pump is bad your God, the fuel pump is one million. Do you say throw the car away? What do you do? One million. That's a brand new car. That's another type of car. But you take one million and fix it. As you are fixing it, do not tell you, ah, oh God, the horn does not work. How much is horn? Five hundred thousand. What will you do? Why are you fixing it? The cost of the car is the price of that car that you are considering. If not, you just tell yourself, if I put 1.5 million, will I not get another one? Why am I wasting money? No, it's not waste. Is that the price you paid for it, you can never ever again repay it. So you will do anything to keep it. I have just told you that God will do anything to keep you. And it is not the prayers. I didn't pray for you. I gave you an information. The next time that breast cancer wants to show up, tell the breast cancer, a price was paid on my life. It is the blood of Jesus. And if he has paid that blood price, you are too cheap. He will pay for you too. The next time barrenness is wanting to show up in your life, tell barrenness, you don't understand. A price has been paid for my life. It is the blood of Jesus. And if he will pay that price, he will give me womb. You are too cheap. You are too cheap. There is nothing again that will be as costly as your salvation. If he could save you, he would do anything for you. Lift your hands. Pray. I am a child of God.
call you answer Any door I knock you open You're an incredible God Incredible God Incredible God You're an incredible God Incredible God Incredible God 